My name is Keith Bennett and I'm standing for council to push buttons, to call public meetings, start using binding referendums and build a united, fully autonomous local council. Throughout this video, I provide information and sources. This affects us all. Upper Hutt and New Zealand, in fact the whole world right now, is staring down the barrel of a gun. Things are happening at pace around the world on many levels and appearing not connected in any way. Meet the candidate events are distracting candidates and voters from asking serious questions by turning the most serious of things into a game show. <laughs> There are on average less than 10 people in the audience. Last night there was one person online from the one I was watching. Instead of questions regarding the very existence of local councillors on the line, we get questions on dog parks, pools, and whether you wear a mask. You know, when the rest of the world stopped wearing masks three months ago, or longer. Without a local council, you won't be able to ask about dog parks and pools. Upper Hutt is in trouble and they don't want you to know or start asking questions. I'm abstaining from meet the candidate events. I'm changing the way you get to meet your candidates. Two timed minutes isn't long enough. This is my meet the candidate. However improbable and untenuous a connection between them, they appear. Everything is connected. When you understand the destination, the journey and the players become obvious. This is my campaign video. Please listen, because this is the most important local body election Upper Hutt has ever had, and the most important video you may have ever seen, if you only listen to the six o'clock news. Career bureaucrats tell you it's time for a change, then poll you on what to stand for. They won't answer questions with straight answers, and only tell you what the current consensus is, not what they stand for. By the time I have finished here, you will know what I stand for. Candidates for mayor, are here to be open and clear, explain what they intend for the city, and not file complaints with police when asked tough questions. Uh, can you speak? Hello, is this Keith? Yes, it is. Keith, it's Sergeant Murison, how are police, how are you? Hi, good thing, how are you? Good, good, thank you. Hey Keith, just wanted to give you a call. We've had um, a, a little bit of a complaint from um, one of the councillor Angela McLeod in some relation to some of the, the stuff that's been put on Facebook and oh, such. Good grief, I'd love to know what's uh, going on. <laughs> so I've had a read of it um, and um, from what I can see there's not really anything in it. Difficult questions are going to be asked. They need to be answered and not diverted to a point where we say, I'm offended, you hurt my feelings, I'm calling the police. This is the progressive left's virtue signaling woke cancel culture in action and it's trying its best to establish itself in Upper Hutt. We do not have a free and fair autonomous local democracy. There is not one free and fair local democratic council in New Zealand. It is time to get our free and fair local democracy back. I am standing for council because no councillor is talking loudly enough about many elephants in the room. I may be introducing things you will not have heard on the six o'clock news. Vital things you need to hear about in the world affecting local councils that are suppressed. This is no ordinary local election. This is the most important local election Upper Hutt has ever seen and could be the most important conversation to be a part of where you can make a difference in your lifetime. Upper Hutt is really in trouble. New Zealand is really in trouble. The world is. One, I don't see councillors or meet the candidate game shows shouting from the rooftops that the very future of council is on the line. Two, the World Economic Forum is actually who controls local councils. Their self-interest policies are localised and mandated upon councils by central government. Their policies are devaluing ratepayers' life savings, threatening our free way of life, and irreversibly changing Upper Hutt's and New Zealand's landscape. If we let them continue, Upper Hutt and New Zealand will become a city of shadows and wind tunnels, and every movement and transaction tracked. Three, the future of community-led organisations is under threat. Many of you know me as someone who used to fix computers for free, and many of you know me as the Upper Hutt City Council photographer. 
Through my lens, I photographed the community's soul since I was a teenager at Upper Hutt College. I have lived in Upper Hutt since I was 10. I remember the days we had a vibrant Maidstone Mall full of life. It had a record shop, pet shop. I developed my photos at the photography shop and it had its own hardware store, cinema with huge spiral staircase and even a butcher from memory. It had a soul and a community space and mall parking was free. Paying for mall parking is an attack on the elderly and less abled. Gee, that was a great plan. How's that working out? Accelerating since the first in-house arrest two years ago, the soul has been ripped out of so much of our lives. Careers torn to shreds, families broken, people injured for life, with our corporate government's unmandated and unrelenting rollout of authoritarian United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and World Economic Forum agendas. Common sense, debate and right of reply left the room. And along with the sustainable technocracy comes centralised world government, requiring facial recognition to access services and even the internet. Once we access these services, our spending will be tracked with a digital ID. New Zealand is already lined up to be one of the first to roll out cashless sustainable finance and its programmable digital currency. Yes, programmable. I have even seen discussion where currency may have a spending time limit to generate consumer spending. Gee, how green. Consider for a moment how we have been trained the last 20 years to spend. Think flybys and expiring hot points. It's all training to spend digitally and it's called gamification. Google it. Apple, Samsung, Nike, Starbucks, KFC, McDonald's to name a few. The very same corporations whose crocodile tears are crying climate emergency. Have you figured it out yet? I'll wager I can run rings around any standing candidate in this election regarding technology. I was an electrotechnical, mechanical systems engineer for 30 years on land down at sea. I have seen the evolution of computers from being helpful to now invading and controlling every aspect of our lives. I have a privileged perspective, an insight on what's happening in the world. I'd go back to before mobile phones in a heartbeat. Last week, Japan rejected a central bank digital currency. The Japanese people showed us, when you stand up to tyranny, it can be defeated, and New Zealanders can do this too. Now more than ever, we need to fight to keep cash, push back this digital technocracy takeover, and take back our hijacked local council. We need to foster a community resilience focus and fully get behind community-led groups to hold on to and make our community strong. The bandstand in High Street was turned into a road years ago. Bad decision. The mall's fountain and floor space for community events gone. Not a council decision, but overall bad for the community. The mall used to be a destination. Without spaces for community, what have we got? These are just some of the things I am standing for besides getting our council back. The biggest elephant in the room that no councillor or candidate is talking loudly enough about or at all, has now finally found its way into the CEO's pre-election report. The rubber is finally starting to hit the road. Have you asked your currently preferred candidate why they have not mentioned this quote from our CEO? Central government has initiated the most significant local government reform in 30 plus years. Three Waters, Resource Management Act, and the future of local government. The full impact is unknown. It will be a significant and substantial change to the fabric of local government. The very future of local government is on the line and under review by central government right now. If it is important enough to be in the CEO's pre-election report, why then have councillors not made this their top priority and shouting it from the rooftops? I want to restore district planning autonomy, defund LGNZ and confront the Resource Management Act. They are devaluing hard-working ratepayers' life savings, driving people out of their homes and changing our landscape. Ratepayers are already coming into council complaining about next-door high-rise developments that have no off-street parking and overshadowing uh, their homes. Central government's mandated urban intensification plan means over time Upper Hutt will become a city of shadows and wind tunnels rather than a city of sunshine. Council's current mindset is nothing can be done. I say, like hell it is. The Local Electoral Act 
2001 gave local authorities the right to hold referendums. So where are they? Where are the public meetings to talk about these most serious subjects? Where is the resident engagement? I'm calling for old school public meetings to stimulate residents' participation, to give people hope and to show it is not a waste of time having your say. We need direct democracy in the form of binding local referendums. Why is it central government who decides whether a referendum is binding or not? Surely that's a conflict of interest. The decision to be able to hold binding referendums should always lay with the country, not a single leader, and especially not a leader of a party where overwhelming, with an overwhelming House majority. Surely a kind and caring government wants every voice heard. Surely there's only one type of fully democratic referendum, and that would be a binding one. Why would anyone vote in a government that didn't want to hear from and talk to the public, especially in times of a disagreement? This should be written in law that governments be compelled to talk to the people in the public interest. In a free, open, transparent and trustworthy democracy, referendums should always be available. Otherwise, it is not a democracy and government overreach cannot be kept in check, as we have seen this last two years. Otherwise, what is government? for if only to mandate foreign agendas upon unsuspecting councils. This is what is happening, people. I'm calling to defund LGNZ. Councils do not need LGNZ for anything. Councils are quite capable of making decisions on their own via their residents and ratepayers. LGNZ is a conduit. A conduit is like train tracks. It has one job, to get something unobstructed from point A to point B silently, without being seen, and as fast as possible. That something is a centralised world government that doesn't want local government to exist. Local government is a roadblock to centralisation. Local government never stood a chance. LGNZ was set up the same year as the plan for the 21st century was agreed uh, by National in Rio in 1992, with no public engagement. The plan for the 21st century, agreed by our government in 1992, is centralised world government, period. What it is cannot be denied. The 90s saw the writing on the wall for the eventual downfall of local democracy to be replaced by centralisation. This was obviously in planning long before 1992. But all is not lost. This can be turned around. I propose council autonomy and LGNZ be tackled a similar way Mayor Wayne Guppy is tackling Three Waters right now on our behalf. By collaborating, and pooling resources with like-minded councils, pushing back on central government and court. But more than that, with binding referendums, so residents and ratepayers are involved in the pushback and taking back self-determining democracy. In 2018, LGNZ pushed for a positive shift from centralisation to a focus on localism to rebirth community and local democracy. This was wholeheartedly embraced by communities and councillors campaigned on it because they thought it meant a return to the self-determining local democracy. LGNZ's localism vision, however, was tied in with SDGs, so either way LGNZ hedged its bets and actively pushed either way for a centralisation using words residents thought meant a return to community control. All this was to lull people into, into placing LGNZ on a pedestal, that their mission is in the public interest, just as their mission statement says. However, they were always going to flip-flop. The proof of this is here now. Fast forward three years and the pendulum has well and truly swung, smashing through the wall the opposite but same direction. LGNZ's mission statement is to be the voice of the people. Why then did LGNZ facilitate the government to take full control of three water assets, something that wasn't LGNZ's to give away? LGNZ furthermore signed a heads of agreement with government that should it go ahead, LGNZ would not stand in the way. I understand some mayors knew nothing about what club LGNZ was up to, so much for their mission statement. And at the time, Mahuta was minister for both LGNZ and Three Waters. Talk about conflict of interest. The government is calling for radical changes to local government, spelling the end of local government. The Attorney General's office advice was carry on, business as usual. I don't know about you, but I smell a giant rat. I'll repeat, when you understand the destination, the journey and players become obvious. 
30 plus years of LGNZ, the RMA and central government control has fruited exactly what? The biggest mess of our lives. Yay, let's do that again. Record homelessness, property devaluation, misery, division, intergenerational financial ruin for some, and even historic tree protections removed. How many more governments and their promises broken till we realize we've been had? Clearly LGNZ, the RMA and central government is not capable of holding a piss up in a brewery and to, and to keep on repeating the same, hoping for a different outcome the next time is the definition of madness. I believe 20 years of local government leadership has fruited many positive outcomes for Upper Hutt. However, I believe the ball has been dropped over the systematic erosion of local council autonomy. The pushback on central government, the, the RMA and defunding LGNZ should have started decades ago. In the leadership's defense, however, who would have thought that not tackling this most grisly and ominous of tasks would eventuate in the extinction of local government? It is time to take back local council autonomy before it's all gone. It is time to start using binding referendums to take back our council. If we continue this path, the next milestone is the extinction of local council replaced by racist co-governance and socially scored centralized government followed by, followed closely by, centralized world government. And you thought getting potholes and water leaks fixed now is a problem. Not one meet the candidate event will be discussing any of this, so I abstain. Meet the candidate events are purely to distract you the voter and make you feel included in the process whilst distracting you from asking the real questions. Not one candidate is exposing these elephants in the room. How can two timed minutes on stage give justice to important topics? Rather, the Meet the Candidate events are a platform to display virtue signaling prowess. The time for misguided election distractions and farcical game shows is over. I'm changing the way the game is played to stand for council. I'm not playing your game. This is my get to know the candidate presentation. If you don't like it, don't vote for me. But this is your time to vote for someone with integrity and who has a handle on what's going on. Why do you think Stuff wrote the hit piece? Why do you think they omitted my candidate photo in the paper? Meet the candidate events are set up so only the slickest survive. Do you want schmooze or integrity? The next Meet the Candidate event was to be split into two events, one for women, one for men. So you can see the distractions are cleverly evolving. Apparently the election is now an issue agenda, clearly to keep the issues hidden and not talked about. After I exposed this fact, they changed it to mixed, as it should be. I'd say that's my first win, that's my first success. Who knows the definition of consultation in local government political speak? It's a formal statutory process that occurs in response to a decision that has already been taken. The whole system is set up to mislead and fail you, the public. The source of ratepayer property devaluation is responsible for the majority of property related problems, such as SNAs, the significant natural areas, and everything stems from central government mandating World Economic Forum policy. I don't remember central government's pre-election promise, including local governments to be managed by the World Economic Forum's policy. There is no conspiracy theory about Agenda 2030 and sustainable development goals. Demonstration, I hope, of our strong commitment to the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. We have incorporated the principles of the 2030 Agenda into our domestic policy making. Jacinda Ardern openly states she is rolling it out with a straight face. There is no theory. We only have conspiracy to defraud the country. None of what is bypassing our local democracy was voted on in this country. And this is worrying. <clears throat> because some of you do not realize it yet, but this will impact you more than anything else government has ever done before in your, your entire life. Sustainable development goals directly affect all local councils internationally, not just New Zealand. The World Economic Forum is a collection of self-appointed international bankers, fund and asset managers. They call themselves stakeholders. I'm sure you've heard that word by now, and no, it does not mean the likes of you or I. Their self-interest policies are being what is subvertly mandated upon local government worldwide by central governments. For those of you that don't realise the significance of what this is, all the rules and regulations you and I will start to live under 
are coming from the United Nations rather than your local councillor. Our current council's mindset means they think they have no voting choice. Louder voices are required to push back and I need your help. Control of our lives is being handed over to self-appointed overseas corporations who never stepped a foot in Upper Hutt. The World Economic Forum is a self-appointed foreign corporation. We are witnessing the beginning of a cashless, centralised world government unless you stand up and say no. Upper Hutt is staring down the barrel of a gun with some standing candidates. We need councillors and a future mayor not aligned with the UN, World Economic Forum or anything remotely aligned with UN Sustainable Development. Sustainable finance, diversity, equity, none of it is fluffy and nice. We have at least two mayoral candidates and several ca councillor candidates that are one or more are desperate to get a foothold in this council. They are offering to donate their entire remuneration. You must question their true motivation for doing that. Be wary of candidates with big finance backgrounds, hiding financial backers. Be wary of any terminology including the word sustainable. Read LinkedIn profiles. Research before voting our upper Hutterway to centralise government. By between 2030 and 2050, the UN will morph into the One World Centralised Government, as did the League of Nations in 1946, become the UN, where the then League of Nations handed over all its assets and control to the United Nations with no public input or referendum. The League of Nations granted the new UN Secretariat full control of all of its assets and library and archives in April 1946. As did that happen in 1946, so will the United Nations, also a self-appointed organisation, hand over full control without your vote or a referendum to a new centralised world government. This latest attempt at self-appointed centralised government is controlled by the same self-appointed criminal international banking corporations and organisations. The World Economic Forum is just one of them and your Jacinda Ardern is an alumni of their government infiltration program. And I have to say, um, when I mention our names, like Mrs. Merkel, um, even uh, Vladimir Putin and so on, they all have been young global leaders of the World Economic Forum. Mm -hmm. But um, what we are very proud of now, is the young generation like uh, Prime Minister Trudeau, um, president of, Brez of uh, Argentina and so on, so that we penetrate the cabinets. It is important you ask your currently preferred candidate, do they understand this? And do they understand councils around the world have no choice but to pass anti-private property, anti-farming, anti-local community legislation because central government is the right arm of the self-appointed World Economic Forum? If your currently preferred candidate replies, United Nations policy has no teeth, they are simply out of touch or disingenuous, especially if they live rurally. Some of the biggest impacts are coming to the rural and farming sectors. I have been trying to open a conversation for two years with mayoral candidate Angela McLeod, who lives rurally and who puts herself forward at Upper Hutt's leading authority on the UN, proudly stating working for them. My public interest questions are consistently not answered. You have to ask yourself why. I have never been a politician, never aspired to being one, but I must say I am unimpressed by candidate McLeod. In an absurd attempt to obstruct my candidacy and access to a free and fair election, Councillor Angela McLeod laid, laid false allegations of social media harassment with the New Zealand police to stop me standing. Difficult questions are going to be asked. They need to be answered and not diverted to a point where we say, I'm offended, you hurt my feelings, I'm calling the police. This is what you call woke. The woke are a virtue signaling minority who try to convince you they are the majority. They don't debate and they cancel others' opinions. It is us that now need to stand up and push back their cancel culture. Enough is enough. You should know the social media questions were simply inconvenient to Councillor McLeod, who refused to answer transparently. Then she deleted them and I questioned her about that. I asked questions on her campaign page weeks before I'd even thought about running. Questions regarding the World Economic Forum drives systemic change at local council level, whilst shielding central government from the spotlight. 
and also the climate change agenda. Shortly after, councillors were told I was going to be running. I then received a call from the police. Interesting timing, hey? I have four nominations from members of the public and upper hut business owners who between them employ 30 plus staff. They nominated me because the people of Upper Hutt do not want an anti-democratic career bureaucrat element becoming mayor. This was part of my motivation for standing. I cannot sit idly by and watch our city and lives be presided over by woke, virtue signaling career bureaucrats who are offended by questions. We have a pro-UN mayoral candidate censoring debate and cancelling questions on her campaign page, questions I've been trying to raise of her for two years in her area of proclaimed expertise. What other questions will she cancel if she became mayor? Candidate McLeod's quote, the UN has no teeth, is simply not true. The teeth, so eloquently put, come from World Economic Forum Future Leader training programs. Grooms future leaders with their programmable digital currency, facial recognition, cashless and chipped, centralized global government vision. Their vision is for governments to create SDG-based legislation frameworks without engaging the country. It is straight out fraud. LGNZ is central government's big stick, and its job is to localize the 17 SDG goals upon local councils using central government's SDG framework legislation. Central government gets to hide in the shadows with a spotlight never shining on them. Who knows council funding comes from LGFA? Who knows there is collective liability on participating councils? Who knows if one council defaults that all other councils take on that debt? The more I dig, the more I'm sickened. Councils are being driven into the ground. Who knows, there is no upper tax limit to, tax to ratepayers when, re when recovering the debt. Auckland is 10 billion in debt. Who's heard of ESGs? Environmental, social and corporate governance. You should all be very worried. ESG stands for environmental, social and governance. You can think of it as an analysis framework to help measure and quantify the degree to which an organization is operating in a sustainable manner. ESGs are a social credit rating for companies, investors and clients on a company or council's green carbon and social inclusivity and diversity. A good ESG score is LGFA's loan criteria. So local councils already being socially scored and you are next. Central government have moved the spotlight onto and are hiding behind local councils making them the residents and ratepayers fall guy. Who still thinks a local council makes all the planning decisions? I did. You can already see which councils have embraced the SDGs. Look at all the pretty colours. This completely bypasses democracy with the spotlight never falling on central government. Unbelievably, this is Klaus Schwab, the madman behind the World Economic Forum. The young generation like uh, Prime Minister Trudeau, half of this government, are actually young noble leaders of the world. Economy. We penetrate the cabinets. The change is not just happening. The change can be shaped by us. We have to prepare for a more angry world. How to prepare? Take the necessary action to create a fairer world. I see the need for a great reset. So people assume we are just going back to the good old world which we had and everything will be normal again. This is, uh, let's say, fiction, it will not happen. There is only one way this pandemic is going to go. It's going to get worse and worse and worse. The next crisis is already waiting for us around the corner and it is the climate crisis. This is Klaus Schwab's top advisor, Dr. Yuval Noah Harari, also a madman. Google his videos on transhumanism and who the overpopulated, useless eaters are. Humans are now hackable animals. You know, the, the whole idea that humans have, you know, this, they, they have this soul or spirit and they have free will and nobody knows what's happening inside me. So whatever I choose, whether in the election or whether in the supermarket, this is my free will, that's over. Klaus Schwab's WEF anti-democracy programs affect all governments and local councils around the world. The Young Global Leader program is the reason the last two years you have seen governments turn authoritarian around the world. Have you noticed they are all in lockstep using house arrest lockdowns locking us in our homes? The global authoritarian plan for all governments around the world to be in lockstep was documented by the Rockefeller Foundation in 2010. 
2010, they had the Rockefeller Foundation script a plan to introduce martial law and a permanent method for total control of the citizenry. In this plan that they disguised as an academic scenario, it's called Lockstep, a world of tighter, top-down government control and more authoritarian leadership with limited innovation and growing citizen pushback. I know some of you don't want to hear or believe this, and many just want to bury their head in the sand, and that's fine, I understand. It is truly hard to fight off the cognitive dissonance to believe evil like this in the world exists. Jacinda Ardern, alumni of the World Economic Forum 2014 Young Global Leader Program, long before she became PM, stated on public record, all her legislation and mandates have a fundamental sustainable development goal framework. So right there are the teeth, Councillor McLeod. Who knows, an upper hut ratepayer financially hurting right now or making evasive real estate decisions because the new housing rules councils have no choice on are devaluing the family home. In 1991, we got the Resource Management Act. In 1992, we got the birth of sustainable development goals at the Rio Earth Summit, the plan for the 21st century called Agenda 21. The then national-led government signed New Zealand up and there was no public engagement or referendum for this 21st century vision. The vision that will shut down economies, shut down food production, halt natural gas exploration and make people eat the bugs. The latest central government SDG mandate is the Urban Intensification Plan. Anyone right now can build up to three to six storey apartments unchallenged within walking distance of public transport. Upper Hutt and councils around New Zealand are removing tree protection. How many trees in Upper Hutt have already been removed? Which residents voted on this? In the words of a local architect, without trees there is no neighbourhood, only ghettos. In the CBD there is no construction height limit. Soon you won't be able to see the hills from the CBD. Who realises in 2021, that was last year, New Zealand was the very first country to join the UN Smart Cities program. Whenever you hear the word smart, run the other direction. Think smart electricity meters. Think smartphones, Alexa, Bixby, Siri, Google. They listen and target advertising at you to spend, spend, spend. The very same corporations whose crocodile tears cry climate emergency. Have you figured it out yet? Smart means nothing more than learning about you, controlling you and making you spend. It is only about money and control. Google the line. That's a smart city project being built in Saudi Arabia where people will be living on top of each other in high, in high density spaces devoid of sunlight and fresh air. Contemporary cities couldn't cope with growth. The contemporary city needs a full redesign. What if we removed cars? What if we got rid of streets? What if we innovated in the public space? What if we built around nature instead of over it? What if everything you needed was always a five minute walk away? What if sustainability was not a goal, but a given? What if we replace outdated urban services with new services driven by artificial intelligence? What if we built the line? A 170 kilometer revolution in urban living. Protecting the earth's most stunning nature while creating unmatched livability, a home to all of us. Welcome to the line. Neom. This is a concern because we never voted smart cities in as a country. The impact this will have on people's wellness building three and six stories high and no height limit in the CBD, taking away sunlight, you will see the contrast in the people living in them. We are taking the beauty of what makes New Zealand special and creates happiness away. 
we are turning up a hut into China. You won't be able to just grow your vegetables and for those that love pottering in their garden, your flowers won't grow because as you know, we all need sunlight and water to grow and flourish. We need it as humans, not just plants. Retirees only want single storey. And where will people charge electric cars? So who are we building them for? They are already calling on EV owners in Europe and the US to not charge their cars because there is not enough network capacity. Not even 1% own an EV and this is already happening. The same is happening in New Zealand. Transpower stated there's not enough capacity. Are you seeing the picture yet? EVs can be remotely turned off and controlled by the manufacturer at the behest of government. Any service connected to the cloud can be controlled. This happened last week in the US. Customers who signed up to a rewards program had their cloud controlled air conditioning thermostats disabled. You seeing the picture yet? And when do we say year on year unchecked growth is, is enough? At what point are we standing on top of each other? Oh, hang on, that's what they want. Why is there so much growth? What is driving it? Where is it coming from? Is it Kiwis actually moving into these housing developments? <clears throat> Why does one of our local developments have a widely known nickname? Ask what that nickname is of most any Upper Hutt real estate agent. The point is, I will be looking into what can collectively be done between councils to stand up against central government. Just as we are with Three Waters, the corporations creating these rules, such as the World Economic Forum and UN, were never voted in by Kiwis. Yet, their self-interest agendas are irreversibly changing Upper Hutt's landscape. New Zealanders did not vote for this, and I know Upper Hutt certainly did not. How do we start shining the light on central government hiding behind local councils? Council voting on government mandated legislation should stop and a referendum be called. Rather than councils voting yes on undemocratic mandates with no ability to say no, they should be holding resident referendums in passing government mandated legislation because they think they currently have to. Councils become the fall guy bearing the brunt of unwanted interference and change to our lives that no one can vote on. We want improvement, not change. Councils are unwittingly shielding central government from the spotlight on these anti-private property, anti-farming, anti-community rules and regulations. A rather large penny dropped for me recently. One of my strengths as systems engineer was the ability to fix things no one else could fix. I used to keep a $100 million super yachts computer systems in the electronics runner. I have the ability to join dots together and see a bigger picture. A strength I want to bring to council, along with optimism and hope. For decades, <clears throat> for decades, the central government has been using councils and school boards as a hide behind shield for rolling out anti democratic legislation and damaging mandates. I watched a recent council chamber session where motions were passed simply because they had no choice, because government mandated them to. Only one councillor stood up and voiced his objection to being unable to vote no again. Having interacted with my daughter's school board this last two years, the penny dropped why no one poked their head above the parapet. Talking to the principal and school board was like speaking to a brick wall. I realised the principal and school board either didn't know, didn't want to know, or weren't mentally strong enough to push back on Ministry of Health rules and regulations. These rules and regulations damaging our children's mental health and well-being. I heard this week some councils can't get enough candidates. Mums and dads don't want to stand, and the reason is the last councillors got such a hard time from the, the irate ratepayers, they are not standing again, and who would blame them? It's crazy how many are standing in Upper Hutt though. I'm not surprised by this because mum and dad public want to be part of a democratic process and not be the right arm of undemocratic government where mandates have to be passed unopposed. What is the point in council if we are just the government's right arm and central government's big stick? So you can see why I will be pushing for councils to collaborate just like they are over Three Waters, to stand together and push back on the most overreaching, undemocratic government New Zealand has ever seen. If this doesn't happen, we give central government an open door for their plans to, to hand over New Zealand to a centralised world government, run out of the UN or whatever they call it, when it morphs into a centralised world government by 2030 or 2050. Who wants that? Who will stand with me? Who is with me on standing up and saying no more? 
Let us shift the spotlight to central government. Let us defend our councils and school boards from being central government's big stick and fall guy. We want our local democracy back. We want our children safe. We want the right to vote and, stay and say yes or no. No Kiwi voted in a dictatorship, but that is what we have. Remember, mandates are not grounded in common law and they need our consent to enact them. If enough people stand up and say no to mandates, then they will not go through. That is democracy in action. I am asking for a mandate myself. I would like Upper Hutt's mandate through voting for me to stand up for your local democracy. I have dealt with bullies my whole life. I am ready for this. Will you vote for me? Maybe I'm a visionary. My vision is to have a local council. No one wants to be the right arm of central government and the World Economic Forum. I want Upper Hutt to be able to say no, as well as yes to government proposals, any proposals. I think they call that democracy. Who is with me? Lastly, number three, there's so, many, there's so much more I want to talk about, but I've just chosen three for now. Climate change is a huge one. Lastly, number three, community-led self-reliance initiatives. I will be an advocate and, and champion for community-led council-independent self-reliance initiatives, such as Food for Thought, that took out the community awards recently. Some councillors are conspicuously unsupportive through their absence and don't visibly back certain resilience-focused community groups. These groups are understandably worried if a pro-UN bureaucratic type candidate element becomes mayor. Being discussed in some community groups is the concern that at least one bureaucracy focused mayoral candidate has community groups in her radar for council control in her long-term plan. It is the feeling in some community groups that at least one councillor standing for mayor will shut down some community-led groups simply because her bureaucratic boxes have not been ticked and she would rather council manage community groups. This is actual feedback. I will fight to not let that happen. Community-led groups must remain community-led. One thing is a given. I will fight to keep community-led groups independent of council. Community groups need to be led by the community to be able to steer their own ship, and I will champion that. I will advocate for the selfless people that run these programs. We need more community-led self-sufficiency startups. Career bureaucrats tell you it's time for a change and then poll you, the voter, on what to stand for. I think right now you know exactly what I stand for. When you see my name, Keith Bennett, know that that name stands for honesty, straight answers, and accountable integrity. Thank you.
Uh, I soaked up there. It's hot out here.